Pop, a filmmaker and photographer, and I'd like to talk to you about Sigma. I've been a fan of Sigma since I launched the ST14 quite a few years back in the DSLR world, and um, then they launched the ST15, which was a disappointment, and now last year in June they launched the ST1, and that's pretty much where they stand today. They just haven't really lived up to their uh, Foveon sensor capabilities or expectations. Back when they came out with the SD14, everybody was excited about the Foveon sensor. Um, I'm still excited about the Foveon sensor. I think it has great hopes simply because by its very nature, where it captures um, the three colors RGB separately at each pixel through its three different plates, one for each color, makes it a better sensor than a single plate sensor. It's just common sense. But Sigma have been slow with their development of uh, new cameras and uh, better resolutions for their cameras, uh, which is a disappointment. So I just wanted to do a follow-up on an article that I wrote about them back in 2010, before the, uh, the SD-1 had come out, just to see where things stand today. So let's go to my computer and uh, go from there. So this is the article that I wrote back on 2007, on January the 1st actually, about the ST14, which had just come out. And this wonderful new camera from Sigma with the, the Foveon sensor, which had everybody talking. It was amazing. Um, wonderful color reproduction and everything. And, uh, even then I, uh, I was talking about the, uh, the, the Foveon sensor and the fact that they were advertising it as being a 14 megapixel camera, but it's really more like a 5 megapixel camera. This is Sigma was doing some fuzzy or funny math there. They were adding the total number of megapixels across all three sensor plates to give you a total of 14 megapixels. But really, each photo that came out of the camera, RAW or JPEG, was only 5 megapixels, which at the time was eh, acceptable because you know the cameras were in the range of 6 to 10 megapixels. I think the only camera at the time which was had a, a large number of megapixels, or a big resolution, was the Canon 5D. So the SD14 was great, and I was hoping Sigma was going to continue along the same line with the, the next camera they launched. Unfortunately, the next camera that Sigma launched um, in 2010 was the SD15, which I wrote about in this article. Um, this is the SD15. It is a uh, nice looking camera design-wise, external design-wise, but really didn't differ that much from the SD14. They had a few things where it differed, but uh, really it just didn't keep up with the times. So whereas the SD14 was acceptable by the market standards, it was sort of enough to get by and, and compete alongside the DSLRs of that day, of its day. The SD15 fell woefully behind the times by a couple of years, I estimated. It just wasn't quite there. It, the speed wasn't there, the uh, the HD video was not there at all on this camera, whereas the other DSLRs with APS-C size sensors were starting to all introduce uh, HD video recording, and uh, the resolution just wasn't there anymore. It was still 5 megapixels. And I kept wondering, what in the world is Sigma trying to do here? How are they hoping to compete with the other folks on the market when their camera still only has five megapixels. I just couldn't figure it out. And neither could most of the people who looked at it, so it didn't sell very well. And so let's forward to today. Uh, almost today anyway. Let's look first at uh, what Sigma did when they announced the SD1. This was back on May 20th of last year. They announced it as a 46 megapixel DSLR and they called it a medium format camera. I mean look at the subtitle there. Medium format. And this is a, an APS-C size sensor that once again lies about the actual resolution. It's certainly not 46 megapixels, it's actually 46 divided by 3 or 44 divided by 3, somewhere between 14 and 15 total megapixels here is what it is. Which I guess would be okay if the camera was absolutely amazing otherwise, um, but it isn't. It, it, it just at least I don't feel that it is. I mean, if Sigma can prove to me that it is, and I'd love to see if they can prove that to me, then I'll call it amazing. But I'm sorry, I'm looking at the specs. I looked at the specs back then, I'm looking at the specs now, and I still don't find them amazing. And what I also don't find amazing at all, actually, I find disappointing, is the announced MSRP 
there was 9700 back when it launched. 9700 for an APS-C size camera that took 14 megapixels photos. No incredibly special low light capabilities, no HD video capabilities, nothing really fantastic that set it apart from its competition. So why in the world the, the, the inflated price? Now let's look at the camera today on the Sigma website. There you see it now and you see the uh, MSRP has fallen dramatically. I bought a third. It's now at 6700 and I'm sorry but I still cannot believe it's that high. I, I just can't. I honestly question who would buy this camera at that price. You would have to be a Sigma true fanatic to spend that much money on a camera that again has nothing fantastic to distinguish it from its competitors when you put it side by side with the other cameras in its class. That would make you say, my God, I want this camera and I'll pay the price for it. It just doesn't. And what I guess is more telling about this is the fact that uh, when you go to B&H Photo, when you go to Amazon and you look at, uh, or Adorama, and when you look at um, the reviews for this camera, there either are no reviews at all or very few reviews, meaning not that many people bought it. I mean, a B&H Photo, there are, what, three reviews. One is a one-star review, one is a three-star review, one is a five-star review. Uh, there was one guy who said he loves it and two other guys who said they, they either hate it or don't like it. So that should, be, that should be something to think about when you look at the camera. The thing that gets me, the thing that still gets me, is the Fofion sensor has so much capability. I don't know why Sigma R&D is so slow. I mean, I look at these photos. Sure, they're taken in the studio with all the right lighting and all, everything else, perfect. But uh, these are amazing colors. And still, I think it's too high priced. The price is right up there, $6,700, $6,900, I'm sorry, for, for this camera. I still think it's unjustified, the price, that is. So there you have it. Sigma's R&D is it's just, it's not keeping up with the times and with the needs of DSLR users, particularly the needs of HDSLR users like me, because I shoot with uh, HDSLRs. I think they're great. And if I were to get a Sigma now, I wouldn't be able to, to, to shoot any video with, with it. Unless you count the tiny little pathetic video that the DP1 or DP2 shoots, a 320 by 240 video as video, which I don't. I'm sorry, but I think nowadays a video camera, if it doesn't shoot high definition, it's not really a video camera. It's more like a, a child's plaything. So yeah, Sigma, please do something to amaze me. Do something to amaze those of us who expect more out of you. I'd love to see what you can do. Anyway, I wish you the best. I think the Foveon sensor is amazing. You just have not yet realized its full potential. I hope that you do at some point. Really, let's see what happens. The future is an interesting place, full of hope. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.